On this episode of On The Trail, we're testing out some new shoes. Let's get going. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So glad you could join us today. Of course, as you already know, we are testing out some tires, specifically the Nexon Rodian MTX. It is a mud terrain tire. This one happens to be a 37-1250-17. And for full disclosure purposes, I do need to let you know that Nexon did provide these to us to test. However, they didn't have any say in how we test them or what I'm about to tell you about the tires. This is gonna be our initial test of these. I plan to do some future updates as I get some more seat time with the tires as well as some additional miles so we can get a well-rounded opinion of how they really do. But for today, while I do have some facts and stats I do wanna share with you, I think it's best right now to roll in our trail footage so you can kinda of see how they performed. Check it out. For our testing, I met up with several friends to spend the day wheeling some great trails in Kentucky. While I was not gonna be doing a direct comparison between whatever random tires my friends had on their rigs to the MTX, it would allow me to go ahead and be in a group setting where I could make some basic performance comparisons between how the MTX did versus the rest of those tires under the same conditions. The first obstacle was not much of an obstacle and the 37s allowed me to go ahead and cross over this little creek and off camber section with relative ease. Next up was this washout area with an exposed culvert pipe. Here my buddy Michael comes up to it. He's got his lockers on. Unfortunately, that driver's side tire grabs the pipe and it just pulls him right down into that little ditch area. And picked a better line tighter towards that tree as Mitch is telling him to uh, get over there and then got through it with ease. Next, it was my turn. Uh, Mitch, of course, spotted me a little bit closer to the tree uh, so I wouldn't fall in down to that ditch. I was not running any lockers for this. Came through, thought I was pretty good here. Uh, thought I could just go ahead and crawl it, and then this happened. You can see that front tire spinning a little bit. Turned the wheel, hoping to get some traction, and then the tire just carried me up and over that culvert pipe. There we go. Just past that culvert section, we came to the muddy, keep going, sticky keep going, hill climb. Keep going, keep going, go, 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 go. Oh, there it is. All right. That's good. Noble try. So right now we're getting up past these rutted, slick areas right here. This is a good example of how just a little bit of water can make a trail go from pretty easy to much more difficult. In this case, the Rubicon's got some street tires on it. They're getting caked up. Uh, we're winching him to this uh, Grand Cherokee up here. Uh, and then we're going to try to get everybody else through here shortly. So we'll see how it goes when it finally gets to us. It should probably be a lot more chewed up by then. Maybe we'll get rid of some of that top uh, layer of, of slickness and we'll climb right up, hopefully. If not, well... There's always the winch option. Hopefully we won't have to use that. With the exception of two rigs that had to winch this hill, everybody else made it up one of two ways. The first shown by my friend Doug here, coming up full throttle, perfect line, a little bit of side action, but makes it up to the top just fine. The second way demonstrated by my friend Mason, he's got a good run at the bottom, but eventually as he comes up here, he's going to lose his momentum as the Jeep bounces. He's going to go ahead and need to reverse and then give it a full throttle to get the rest of the way up the hill. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep on it, keep going. So it is my turn on this next section on this hill climb. I'm uh, going to put both lockers in. We're probably going to need it. It's really slick. And we'll see how it goes. So reflecting back a little bit on that hill climb, as I came around the corner, uh, I knew that I needed to get on the throttle a little bit, having 
seen everybody else do that and not wanting to lose momentum, especially down at the bottom part of the hill. But as I got past that section, um, I found the tires were just really gripping and pulling, and I, I let off the throttle and just kind of... I don't want to say just coasted up the hill, but I didn't need massive amounts of throttle to go up it. The tires were working, they were pulling. It, it was really nice. While our route didn't take us on anything that I would consider a major rock garden, there were rocks along the way. Some were bigger, some were smaller, some we were going down, some we were going up. In all cases, though, the MTX did really well. There was no slipping or did I ever feel I needed to go ahead and give more power to get over what it was climbing. It just gripped and grabbed and went over. That being said, I hope in the future to get on some larger rock obstacles so I can see how they really do on something a little bit more challenging. In between the trail sections, there are paved roads. So let me go ahead and talk a little bit about how the tires have done on pavement. Up to this point, I have about 950 miles on the tires. A majority of that has been on paved roads. As far as how the tires have felt, I did notice that they softened up a little bit about the 200 mile mark. Uh, I could tell it was a little bit smoother ride than prior to that. As far as driving around every day, I don't think this would be a problem for anybody. They, they're competent on the road. They feel planted to the road. I've even gone around a couple of corners and given a little extra gas to see if I can break them free. Uh, nothing happened with that. Traction control didn't kick in and save me or anything. The tires felt firmly planted to the road surface. In general terms, if you're looking to have a mud tire that you can daily drive, I don't see any reason why you couldn't with this one. Soon we came to what I consider one of the most scenic areas of our route. This is on the Chateaui Trace section, and it is just gorgeous down in here. It's about a hundred yard long creek crossing, and it's wet rock. And again, the uh, MTX had no problems going up this. There's a little bit of a stair step in through here as you go along, in and out of those. I uh, did not have any lockers on for this, no slippage of any kind. Uh, the tires just kept gripping and pulling right on through. So right now we have come to a pretty good hill climb. It's a, let me turn the camera around here a little bit this way. It's really soupy and muddy as you get up into this spot up here. And then got some ruts down here. As the tires had been doing all day with these muddy, wet hill climbs, they just went right up. Made up that last muddy hill pretty good. Um, happy with how everything went today so far. Still got about a three hour drive home. Gonna get some more impressions on how the uh, tires do on the highway. Right now, filling everything back up to about 35 PSI for the ride home and uh, we'll be heading out pretty soon. If you're wondering how the tires did in the rain, well, I can answer that because our entire drive home, we had light to moderate rain. As most of you know, a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited has the aerodynamic stylings of a brick or a barn, depending on which analogy you wanna use. That being said, driving a lifted one on large tires on a rainy day with some wind isn't exactly the most fun thing to do. That being said, I was really impressed with how well the MTX did in those conditions. Stopping was good, starting out was good, there was no slippage of any kind. At higher highway speeds, I'm talking 65, 70 miles an hour, the tires felt very planted to the road surface even though it was wet. I think the siping on those tread blocks really played a key part in making sure I felt secure on those situations. Overall, I thought they did a very respectable job given the conditions I was driving home in. Back here in the driveway to give you all my final thoughts on our initial testing of the Nexon Rodian MTX. As you saw from the video, the tires did quite well. Uh, in that video, I only aired them down to 20 PSI. Again, a brand new tire, kind of want to wear it in, don't want to just drop the pressure right away and then take it off-roading and then drive home several hours with it. Um, but that being said, um, everything that we went through on that trail ride, the tires did great on. Um, you know, it was nice to have other tires there to compare them to, to kind of gauge, you know, were they doing well, were they not doing well? And overall, I think they did as good as, and in some cases, better than some of the other vehicles with the tires that they had. A lot of other factors in that, right? What kind of tires were they? Um, what line did they take? A few other factors, but overall, very happy with how these did initially on this. Will that continue to be impressive as we get more miles on them? Well, be sure to check back to the channel as we will have future updates on them. But a few things I wanna share with these as far as facts and stats that I think are gonna be important to y'all. Number one, um, this is a very traditional mud terrain tire. This is what I want to see out of a mud terrain tread, right? You've got large outer and then inner lugs and then an outer again. And then in here you've got plenty of void space so that when you get that wheel speed going, it's going to clean out whatever is in there, like the mud or other debris, sand, those kind of things. And it's going to clean it and help you get that traction and help these treads 
dig in. In addition to that, uh, this is 12-ply construction with three of those plies being on the sidewall. And you've got two unique sidewall patterns. You've got this one, which we've got here, which I don't know if you can see because it's still kind of dirty from the trail ride. Um, I'm going to call this you know, more of traditional rib design. On the other side over here, you've got what I'm going to call scales and claws, because I really don't know what it's supposed to be. But you've got two options to run on the tire, which is kind of unique. I um, haven't really seen that before. Um, as one would also expect with a large lug, big void space tire arrangement, um, you do get some humming on the road. It's not anything bad enough that you have to scream and yell at your passengers for them to hear you or you to hear them. Um, I would call it low to moderate humming sound. I don't know, it's sub subjective, right? Depends what you're having it. But it's, it's not as loud as the soft top, let's put it that way. Um, other things you need to know about this, this is an F-load rated tire. Yes, an F-load rated tire. According to Nexon's website, this is capable of holding 3,195 pounds per tire at 80 PSI. I have no reason to run 80 PSI in these tires, not in this Jeep. If I had maybe a full-size truck or I was trailering a lot, then yeah, that might come into play. Um, which then, of course then leads to the next question you might have, are they a true 37 inch tall tire? According to Nexon's website, these measure out when filled to 80 PSI on the appropriate size rim in a perfect setting to 36.8 inches tall. Um, I'm only running 35 pounds of pressure in these on the street, so I took my measurements based on that, so keep that in mind. Uh, they came out to 35.75 inches tall mounted on the Jeep. I measured the spare as just a kind of comparison with that, and it was right at 36 inches tall on that, okay? So my gut feeling is that yes, if you had this unmounted on the same size rim they used at 80 pounds of pressure, it would probably be very close to the figure they have on the site, okay? Uh, a few other things I want you guys to know about these. Um, because they are that F-load tire, they are heavy. Again, 12-ply, 3-ply. Um, I measured these on my super scientific bathroom scale, and they came in approximately at 86 pounds a tire. Mounted on this wheel, they're right around 114, if I'm not mistaken. You can feel that weight when you're, when you're out driving these, both, you know, especially when you're aired down more, right? That's a little bit more grippy, and you can feel that weight in the Jeep. Um, pros and cons of that, right? It's heavier, so that means potentially um, because of that force and spinning, you're going to have more wear on your items, uh, ball joints, you know, uh, tie rods, all those kind of things. But at the same time, that's what makes it a really beefy tire off-road, right? You've got a lot of strength in this tire, so uh, potentially maybe something that might cut or nick another tire may not do it to this one. Well, that is going to do it for this episode. If you all have any questions, post them up down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, do all that other stuff you need to down below so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time, I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you on the trail.